everybody. Today I'm going to be making my mom's world famous, maybe just famous, my mom's famous gingerbread recipe. I am planning on making gingerbread houses and a few cookies, but my big goal is mini gingerbread houses this year. I'm not super keen on the store-bought ones. Yes, they might appear to be easier, but I have witnessed a few uh, disasters of those store-bought ones that provide the icing and all... Usually what happens is the icing is no good. It doesn't harden properly. And kids are trying to create these gingerbread houses with this really runny, crappy icing. And it just doesn't work. It winds up looking like a melted gingerbread house uh, tsunami mess. This year, we are gonna make some little things of beauty. I'm just gonna get started. Uh, I have all my ingredients prepared here. So the first thing we wanna do is we want to sift and or whisk our dry ingredients together in a bowl. I've already sifted the flour. Sifting's a bit of an old fashioned thing. You don't necessarily need to do it. I just think it's fun. So every now and then I like to sift my flour. I am doubling my mom's recipe. So I will give you the proportions as the recipe states, but if it looks like I have enormous quantities, I do. Uh, it's, I'm doubling it. Four and a half cups of all purpose flour. I'm gonna add one teaspoon of baking soda. So what I have here is one teaspoon of baking soda and one teaspoon of salt. Two teaspoons of cinnamon. And here I've got one teaspoon of ground ginger, ground cloves, and ground nutmeg. I always do heaping uh, teaspoons. Nothing more disappointing than eating a gingerbread cookie that looks like it's the right color, it's the right shape, if it's a gingerbread man or woman, and then you take a bite of it and it's just bland. Ugh. Yeah, I just, it's not even worth it. It's not worth it one bit. All right, so I will set that aside and haul out my KitchenAid. I'm gonna preface this by saying, don't double this recipe unless you have a larger mixer. It's quite a large recipe to begin with. The next thing I'm gonna do is cream together my butter and my sugar. The recipe calls for one cup of butter or half a pound. As you can see, I'm putting a pound of butter in there because I'm doubling it. And you want this butter to be room temperature. And now I'm gonna add one cup of white sugar. And now I'm just gonna beat this until it's nice and fluffy. I'm just gonna scrape down the sides and then beat it for about another minute. I think that looks fluffy enough. Okay. So now I'm going to add one teaspoon of vanilla. I'm gonna add one egg. And I'm gonna add one cup of molasses. This is the magic sweet sauce right here that makes gingerbread as delicious as it is. It adds a very, very rich, deep flavor. Here's a hot tip for you though, get the fancy molasses. Don't get the black strap. It's a little bit too intense. This is a little bit lighter and a little bit, just has a nicer flavor. For gingerbread, you want a slightly more delicate flavor. So go for the fancy stuff. Okay, and we're just gonna mix that until it's all combined. You see it's got such a beautiful color. Smells so great. We're ready to add our flour mixture now. I have got my bowl of flour right here. Um, I'm gonna add this in thirds. So I'll add a third, mix it up, add another third, mix it up, and the last third. Well, let's get started. You always wanna start your beater on slow. Even when it's slow, it sometimes is a bit messy. Smells so good. I love gingerbread. This is one of those cookies that I can just sit and scarf. You know, this is one of my childhood cookies, so I've been eating these since I was just a wee lass. Real childhood memory cookie. And believe you me, this is one of the best gingerbread cookies you will ever eat. Trust me, I am not biased, honestly. I'm just gonna add all the rest of my flour now. Oh, it's heavy. <laughs> oh, it's a little fall just borderline having a big enough bowl for this uh, giant batch. I might get in there with my hands actually at the very end and just give it a little bit of a kneading. And that my friends is some perfect looking gingerbread dough. I think it's done. That is some solid, solid dough. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Very, very excited to uh, make these little houses. Oh, that's heavy, holy cow. But remember, this is my doubled, my doubled batch, so it had nine cups of flour in it. I just think there's something so beautiful about a giant ball of dough. I'm not wrong, right? 
This is just a thing of beauty. Look at that. Ah, love it, love it. I'm just gonna separate this giant ball into four smaller balls. I'm gonna flatten them a little bit, wrap them in uh, wax paper, shove them in the fridge for four hours, then we will be ready to roll it out. Hi everybody, I am now ready to roll out my first ball of gingerbread dough. The first thing I'm going to do is just lightly flour my parchment paper. I'm just going to use my hand and just put a little bit of flour onto my gingerbread. Oh, I wanted to show you as well, I made the templates for my gingerbread houses. So there's number one, the second one, which I quite like. The third one is a little bit bigger, so I'm not sure yet if I'm gonna use this one, but it's adorable. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to give my rolling pin a light dusting of flour. I'm ready to roll. So we're wanting to roll this out to about an eighth of an inch thick. And because the dough has just been in the fridge, it's quite stiff. So you kind of got to push a little hard. I like to roll it so that you're rolling back and forth in one direction, and then you can move your dough around and then roll back and forth in that direction, in the opposite direction. And the great thing about the parchment is that you can kind of use that and roll the parchment paper around, which makes it a wee bit easier. This is rolling out really nicely. So oh, I think I'm gonna start out making this house. It's a cute little one. These are for the kids so that they can each have their own individual house to decorate. So I need two of these, two of these, and two of these. I have got my super sharp knife right here. What we wanna do is we wanna maximize our dough. So we don't wanna just take this and smack it in the middle and start cutting out. We want to take this as close to the edge as possible so that we can try and get as many of these out of this slab of dough as possible. Just finding your little spots here. So I think that looks pretty good. So I'm off to the very, very edge over here and I'm just going to cut it out. So I have my prepared pan here and as I'm making them, I'm gonna transfer the piece over to the um, cookie sheet. I'm just gonna use my pancake flipper here to transfer it, but I just wanted to show you that is about the thickness we want. We want to place things on the cookie sheet so we can get the most uh, gingerbread on here as possible. I need to cut another one of these out. So again, I'm sort of just looking to see where is the best spot. That looks pretty good. That looks really good actually. And I wanted to say as well, um, these templates for these little houses, I just Googled mini gingerbread house uh, templates and a whole bunch popped up. And that's why I keep this kind of cardboard paper um, from the back of notebooks and things like that. It's the best for making templates for stuff like this. So never chuck that out. Always keep it. You never know when you might need it. It's really useful. Two of these, these are the pieces of the roof. Remove that. That looks perfect. That uh, thickness is just perfect. Oh, this is gonna be cute, Ooh, so cute. Just have these side pieces now to do. Okay, so we've got one side right there. I just suggest you go nice and slow when you're doing stuff like this. Don't be in a hurry. This is my big mantra with baking is just relax. There's no need to be excited. This is fun. It's a little challenging for sure, but it's supposed to be fun. So never lose sight of that. I like taking my time. Look at that, I've got one complete house on one cookie sheet. So now I'm just going to roll the excess dough into a ball uh, and refill it so I can roll it out again. So I'm just gonna put these in a 350 degree oven for eight to 10 minutes. As you can see, my first house pieces have come out of the oven and I am very excited. They're so cute. Uh, they look fantastic. Um, they needed a couple extra minutes in there, I would say, just because the pieces are quite big. So you can just make gingerbread men out of this dough as well. If you don't wanna make the house, this is just straight up the best gingerbread cookie dough you'll ever find. So happy baking everyone and have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.